hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make some uh, fruit tartlets, so individual fruit tarts with a uh, pastry case and a creme diplomat uh, cream, so uh, a vanilla custard mixed with some uh, whipped cream to make creme diplomat as the base and then some soft fruits on the top. So it's uh, a little bit complicated because you have to make the pastry cases, you have to make the custards, you have to mix in the cream and then assemble everything. And it takes a little bit of time, but it's well worth it. It's, it's perfect um, as the soft fruits come into season. But I thought I would make this now um, just to give people an idea of what they can do. So I'll go on to the ingredients. And for the pastry cases, the pastry, I have um, 350 grams, which is two and one thirds cups based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of plain flour. I have 150 grams, about one and a quarter cups of icing sugar. I have 50 grams, half a cup of ground almonds. Uh, 180 grams, 13 tablespoons of unsalted butter which is uh, very cold and I've cubed that and I have 70 grams of egg so that's uh, basically one medium egg and then about a third of the medium egg as well so I, I put one egg in and about uh, about a third of a beaten egg so that's for the pastry and then uh, to go into the tart cases once I've made it we need a custard and for the custard, I have uh, 480 millilitres, which is two cups of milk. I have five medium egg yolks. I have 40 grams. So that would be large in the USA. When I refer to medium egg yolks in the UK, it's large in the US. I have 40 grams, five tablespoons of corn flour. I have two vanilla beans which I have cut open and taken the seeds out so the seeds are in the dish and the vanilla bean uh, pod is on the top I'm going to uh, use those and then I have 28 grams two tablespoons of butter and uh, once the custard is made and cooled I'm going to use 300 millilitres of double cream whipped to stiff peaks to fold that in to make the creme diplomat and then the the other ingredients will be um, soft fruit so here I have some raspberries and some blueberries and here I have some strawberries um, and I may use some canned peaches as well I haven't decided yet um, but the, the the amount of fruit you need is dependent um, on uh, how large the tarts are that you make and basically how full you want them to be. So I'm going to put the uh, everything in the fridge again except for the ingredients for the pastry and we'll go on to make the pastry. So making the pastry is actually very simple. I'm going to do it in the processor bowl of my immersion blender but you can do it by hand by mixing uh, the flour, the sugar, the ground almonds together and then rubbing the butter in between your fingertips until you have a sort of a sandy like texture but I'm going to put all those ingredients into my processor bowl and I'll just give those dry ingredients a bit of a stir to get those Combine just a little bit. And then I'm going to put the butter in. And I'm going to toss that around as I go. With the butter in, I'm simply going to process that until it uh, has become a sort of very fine consistency like breadcrumbs or sand. I'll just 
just check that. And that looks quite good. So then I'm going to add in my 70 grams of egg. And I'm going to process it until it clumps together into a sort of very soft dough. Now if you find that yours doesn't clump together you can add a little drop of water um, but hopefully you wouldn't need it. And that looks to me as though it's clumping quite nicely. So I'm going to tip that out and I'm just going to gently uh, knead it into a soft dough. So I have everything tipped out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze that together and just gently knead it until it becomes a nice smooth dough. I don't want to work it too much because that just develops the gluten but we are going to rest this in the fridge and chill it for at least two hours so um, the gluten if there was any developed it would then relax quite nicely So that looks to be quite a nice dough. So I'm going to put that into some plastic wrap. And I'm going to fold the wrap over and then I'm going to just use my rolling pin to flatten that down into a nice rectangle basically. Can use your hand so that's good enough like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into the fridge and I'm going to chill it for two hours and after two hours I will come back and I will divide it uh, at least in half, maybe into thirds and roll it out, uh, roll each piece out individually and line our tart cases. But I'll show you that when I come back in two hours. And while the pastry is chilling, I'll go on to make the custard because we need that to cool down before we can use it in the creme diplomat. I need to say straight away, I forgot two ingredients when I was doing the ingredients. Also for the custard, I have 130 grams of caster sugar and I have four sheets of uh, gelatin, four leaves of gelatin there, which weighs seven grams basically. And I'm just soaking that in cold water, which I will, uh, um, I will 
squeeze them to get the water out when I need it. Need it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to place my two cups of milk into a saucepan and I'm going to add into that the emptied uh, pods from the vanilla beans and the seeds from the vanilla bean as well and I'm going to put that on the heat um, and bring it up until it's uh, very hot but not boiling and I'm going to leave it for 10 minutes before I move on to the next step with that. So while the milk and the vanilla beans are heating I'm going to make a paste of the sugar, the corn flour and the egg yolks. I'm just going to scrape out the remainder of that corn flour. Corn flour tends to stick to absolutely everything you let it come in contact with. So I'll put the egg yolks in and I'm going to whisk that until it's a thick paste. And as you can see that quickly whisked into a, a thick paste. So I'm just going to leave that until our milk has um, heated with the uh, taken on the, the flavour of the vanilla from the vanilla beans. So I'll be back with you in about eight or nine minutes when we can uh, start to make the custard. The vanilla beans and the seeds have uh, been in the um, hot milk for 10 minutes and I've taken the the pods out and discarded them and so the milk is very very hot and I'm just going to put a little drop of it into the paste and whisk that. This is to temper the eggs a little bit so that they don't scramble as we make our custard. So I've mixed that through and that's quite good. So now what I need to do is to um, mix the remainder of the milk with the egg mixture and I'm going to do that by pouring the egg mixture into the hot milk and then I'm going to put that onto the heat and I'm going to bring that up to a boil, whisking it the entire time until it forms a nice custard. So with the pan on the heat, I'm going to keep whisking that And this is to prevent any lumps from forming. And I can feel that thickening now as it gets hotter. So that's nice and thick and it's come up to the boil so the corn flour is cooked through. So the next thing to do is to add in our gelatin. So I'm just going to take my gelatin and I'm going to squeeze the water out.
and I'm going to put that into the custard and I'm going to stir it around until the gelatin is dissolved and with that dissolved I'm actually going to pass that through a, a, a strainer that's to remove any larger pieces of vanilla and any lumps which may have formed but I don't think there's any lumps in this custard at all so there's the custard strained and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my 28 grams two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to stir that around until that's melted so then what I need to do is I need to cover that with plastic wrap and allow it to cool down completely and the way I do that is to take the plastic wrap and press it down onto the surface of the custard so that it doesn't create a film as it cools down. I'm going to leave that for about 30 minutes to start cooling down. And then I'm going to put it in the fridge and let it cool completely and that will then be ready to use once we made our pastry cases. It's been two hours and the dough has been chilling in the fridge and I've cut it in half and put taken half out and I put it onto a floured work surface. So this is what it looks like now and it's quite firm but I, I just want to um, make sure it's coated in lightly in flour because I'm going to roll it out and I want to roll it out to a thickness of about two centimetres and uh, before I roll it out let me just talk about um, the tart shapes I'm going to use these pastry rings which have a perforated rim and I can cut the, the dough out and then um, I can either cut it out and, and fold it in or I can cut out the base and then put a strip around the edge uh, to make the case. I also have a silicon equivalent which is larger which I could use but if you don't have those it doesn't matter you can use whatever you have um, to make them. Now so for instance if you have a jumbo muffin tin you can turn it upside down you can roll out the pastry and cut out circles which are about this size eight centimeters and you can chill them till they're firm and once they're firm you can just place them on the upturned muffin tin like that and bake them and as they bake uh, the part of the pastry which overlaps will fold down onto the muffin tin and cook to uh, create a cup for you uh, to use as the tart case. So um, as I said I'm going to roll this out into a rectangle as I say two uh, millimetres, I may have said centimetres, I meant millimetres in depth, in thickness. And that's good enough like that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take six pieces like that and I'm going to transfer those for the time being to a parchment lined baking tray like that and then I'm going to cut out some strips of pastry
like that to start with and if the pastry gets too warm and you think it's melting you can always um, put it in the fridge and chill it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the the rings here and I'm going to put the strip into the ring I'll turn that round so I can work closer to the camera and I'm going to press it down onto the, the base gently and I'm going to press it against the side and once it's pressed down like that I'm going to cut off the excess So that's one done and I'm going to do the remainder of these six. I've rolled out half of the dough and I have filled six of these uh, smaller cases which as I said are eight centimetres which is just over three inches in diameter and I've done three of these larger ones which are ten centimetres four inches in diameter. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those into the fridge and I'm going to chill them for 30 minutes and during that time I will preheat my oven to 180 degrees Celsius, 160 Celsius with a fan, 350 Fahrenheit and these will then be ready to bake. My oven is now preheated and I've taken the cases out of the fridge and I've put them onto a larger baking tray and this is a silicon uh, mat here which is perforated and the reason I'm using that is that um, with these tarts that don't have a bottom these pastry rings if I use the perforated mat it will cook the pastry without making it bubble up from the base um, if I used the parchment paper it's like using a tart tin that has a base you would have to prick the inside of the, the pastry all over and so it's just for simplicity that I'm doing that so I'm going to put them into the oven and I'm going to bake them for between 12 and 20 minutes until they take on a nice colour and I can see that they're cooked all the way through and maybe just beginning to draw away from the edges a little bit um, at that stage I'll take them out of the oven and I'll allow them to cool down before I take them out of the pastry rings. Then I'll come back, show you what they look like and we'll go on to make the creme diplomate and assemble the tarts. So with the pastry cases cooled and the uh, creme patissiere cooled I'm actually now going to whip my double cream. So here I have my 300 millilitres of double cream and I'm just going to use the whisk on my immersion blender to whip that into fairly stiff peaks. So that's now in stiff peaks and um, that needs to be folded into the creme patissiere. So what I'm going to do first of all is tip that creme patissiere into a larger bowl And I'm actually just going to give that a little whisk as well. To loosen that just a little bit. And 
and that's good enough. So then I need to fold in the cream and I'm, I'll take a little bit of it and just fold that in. And that's good. So then what I'm going to do is to put some of that into a piping bag and I'm going to pipe that onto the cases. But before I pipe it onto the cases, I want to get my fruit out and prepare that. So I'm going to pipe, and you could spoon this, this into the pastry cases, but I'm going to pipe it. And then I'm going to put some fruit on. And I've got blueberries and raspberries. And then I'm going to take some strawberry and put that in as well. Just any way, basically. So as you can see, I've uh, put the fruit on each of the tarts in different arrangements and how much fruit you put on and how little you put on is entirely up to you basically. So um, I've kept it fairly simple. Now you could sprinkle some caster sugar over the top if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. So I think I'll have a taste of uh, this one and I'm just going to break it and pick up a piece. Mm. Very nice. I have a nice crisp uh, pastry or tart shell basically very very creamy um, base the creme diplomat is very good indeed lovely vanilla flavor coming through as well and then the uh, soft fruits and that's going to be it for this video and i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my youtube channel in the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and i'll put a link below the video and i'll be back with another recipe in the very near future so until then, happy baking.